just setting up our live. This is a little different because we haven't used a tablet before. So. You can support. I've never seen this message before. All right, for anyone watching on the playback, uh, bear with bear with us. This is our first uh, live <laughs> uh, demonstration, cooking demonstration, and it's going to be, I think, um, not the last, right? <laughs> not the last for sure. Um, so, as you guys are coming in, please uh, tell us where you're coming from. Uh, I know this is probably going um, to be broadcast in different places. We're actually in Portugal uh, right now. Uh, I'll be here for another week before I'm back in the States. But um, so welcome from Portugal. But uh, whoever's tuning in uh, and joining us, uh, please let us know where you are watching from and send us greetings from whatever country, state you're in. All right. Um, we got and it's going to be a little hard to read florence south carolina awesome welcome welcome yeah let us know as you guys are coming in where you are viewing from and so we could welcome you <laughs> we got someone from washington state is that kenwick yeah i think it says kenwick all right, it's hard to read because this tablet is actually really far from me. This probably don't can't tell. <laughs> um, uh, this is the first time we're using a tablet to do a live. Um, I think it's just easier to do a demonstration with the tablet than a phone, but it makes it a little hard. I gotta reach over the table to read where you guys are from. Yeah, we are, we're in Portugal right now. Uh, that's the plan. That's where God is us, has us at the moment. Uh, do I speak Portuguese? No. <laughs> Working on it, uh, praying for the gift of tongues. Still, my wife is actually uh, a little better with the Portuguese. She's um, well, not I wouldn't say fluent, right? But in understanding, <laughs> she's fluent in understanding. She can understand very well. So she's my translator wherever I go. I don't know why I can't see. Um, sure, I see that. Um, but uh, as you guys are coming in, um, you probably know what we're going to be doing here, right? We're going to be talking about, um, or showing, not talking, showing how to roast vegetables without oil. Okay, so we're going to be showing you a live demonstration on how to roast vegetables without oil. Um, anybody going to be uh, following along? I know um, when I posted the, the uh, live in, in some, uh, some groups, uh, people were mentioning that they wanted to follow along so um i think that was a great that would be a great idea um i'll go ahead and show you guys what we have on the table um so if you guys you know decide you want to follow along last minute i guess you could still do that uh but hopefully you're prepared if you're planning on following along we did post the um ingredients we'll be using in the live um description section so uh what we have today here these are one of our, some of our favorite root vegetables, right? So we got Brussels sprouts, carrots, and uh, sweet potato, all right? And anyone, again, who's planning on following along, I wanna know what you guys are using if you're following along. What vegetables are you going to be roasting? If you're not following along right now, uh, you can actually let us know uh, real quick what you would like to roast uh, what, as far as your favorite uh vegetables i say root vegetables but i guess you don't have to be root vegetables but you know just whatever you feel um like you can enjoy roasted you know that is not meat because this if you know anything about diabetes 180 we don't do the meat <laughs> but um that being said does it i wonder i'm wondering if anyone knows why we don't uh use oil um for our our recipes so if you are curious about that um, maybe if you're kind of new to the idea of no oil, no oil cooking, it's actually really popular. It's, it's growing um, in 
um, as a result of all the science that's behind um, how harmful high fat diets can be to our health and the fact that oil is the fattiest of all macronutrients. I mean, if you think about it, oil is pure fat, right? Mm -hmm. So um, when you're comparing oil to carbs and protein, there's uh, nine calories per one gram of, of fat versus four calories per one gram of carb or protein. So you, off the bat, when you're cooking with oil, you're gonna have a, um, additional calories that could be really be avoided once you learn that you can cook without oil, all right? What I say about protein? Protein and carbs. So protein and carbs have about four calories per gram. Uh -huh, okay. You know, I don't know if you knew that. Yeah. Yeah. And then uh, fat has nine calories. So you're gonna have just off the bat and using oil a lot of fat. Do you know how many calories carme are in one tablespoon of oil? I love because I can't eat it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 120. Does that sound wow. surprising? 120 calories in just one tablespoon of oil. Yep. So, um, you know, when you, look, when you look at how much oil, if you cook with oil throughout the day, and a lot of foods, if you're eating out, already have oil in them. Everybody cooks with oil. Um, so that's the first reason why we teach them to uh, not cook with oil. I don't know if that's surprising for anybody. Let us know if that's news to you. If you're like, wow, really? I didn't know uh, that. Uh, so let us know. Yeah, that's that's that is awful, right? Um, so of course, uh, there's a second reason that's more important, really. Uh, I, I know there's probably people who are watching who just want to lose weight, um, or you know, just cut back on some belly fat, maybe you know. But um, there are hopefully are people who are viewing who want to reverse their diabetes, right? And uh, someone wrote here, and I think it's Paul. Uh, you can see it better. I think, yeah. yeah. So how much you be my moderator so I don't miss any of these? Yeah. Read that. I saw about going to it all. Oh, so Paul says that's Paul, right? That's Tammy. I don't hey Tammy. Tammy, yeah, bring it a little closer. Sorry guys, bear with us. The cameras uh, I should say the devices are farther for our for our viewing uh texts yeah, as they come in. Tammy, sorry, Tammy. That is funny. Yes, oil <laughs> is good for the joints. That's about me. Uh, now um yeah, so actually, when you're uh, trying to reverse diabetes, if that's your goal, right? If you're trying to come off medications, reduce medications, uh, or just reverse the disease process as a whole, having oil in your diet makes it very hard to do that. That the reason being is um, many studies have shown that saturated fat actually causes insulin resistance. The more fat you have in your overall diet, the harder it is for your insulin to work properly, which you've observed yourself, right? Mm -hmm. Day and night difference when you have fat in your diet and you're starting to eat carbs. So um, Rosalie says she uh, want, wants to lose weight and wants her, yes, that's right. Insulin resistance, that's what that's the goal um, and then what we teach in diabetes when maybe how to do it. And of course, Rosalie, we already know you're on the right path. Just continue, continue, mm -hmm. right? Um, so. That's if you, if you guys have any questions as we go through this uh, cooking demonstration, definitely chime in. We want to hear from you what your questions are, uh, what your concerns are. The idea is uh, to eliminate oil in your diet. Okay, eliminate oil in your diet. It's very easy to do, especially when you know when you realize. I should say. I should ask you, Carmen. Were you surprised when when uh, how easy it was to cook without oil? Yeah. Yeah. Very, very you good. probably thought like, what? I got started eating oil. Like, how am I going to cook, right? Yeah. You know. Yeah, I just didn't think it would be the same. But um, yeah. Do you miss me? Oil or fatty? Yeah. Um, it's funny because the food that I really loved that had oil in them was like John cakes and you know the fried bake fried bake goods and yeah. stuff mm -hmm. that we have in Aruba. And um, I re I, I miss them in the beginning, but now that my body is accustomed of not eating oil, I should say, I can taste the oil in anything that I eat now, and it tastes horrible. 
Mm -hmm. Like the other night, Lewis was trying a pastry from Portugal, and I was like, let me try it too. I you have to spit it out. <laughs> she wasted my pastry. Pastry, you know? Let's we'll spit it out. I had to spit that thing out because I was tasting it. It was just tasting like only you could oil. Taste the butter. Whatever is oily, yeah, yeah. fat, fattening, I can taste it and I don't like it. So I, mm. it's not fun to eat out anymore. Mm -hmm. So, which is a good thing. I would save money because I can't eat anything on menus because of the oil. oil. Dennis, yeah. Dennis um, brings up a, a good point. He goes, is there a mathematical formula as to how much oil translates to uh, too much, you know, and then uh, fry plantains? Yeah. 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 <laughs> I don't think I would like fry plantains anymore, but um, you could still fry plantains. But I have, a, I have a recipe on how to get it looking like fried plantains without the oil. So I think probably next time we can do that because yeah, but, the fried plantains was a big thing for me, but. Mm -hmm. I just can't deal with the oil anymore. Yeah. So you can still enjoy the things you used to fry. Yeah. You really can. All right. There's gonna there's obviously a taste adjustment, but over time you realize that you don't even crave the you actually start to have aversion to the yeah. to the oil and the fat that's in food, which is good. Now to answer your question, Dennis, um, I'm glad you brought that up. I, I tend to forget that uh, but the the easiest way to track your fat percentages is using uh, uh, calorie counting apps. Um, you can do it just for a few days. Uh, the app that we have our clients use is uh, Lose It. It's called Lose It, literally Lose It. <laughs> um, you can find it in Play Store, iTunes Store, and I'd say, you know, use that for a week uh, and, and try I would it. say about two weeks, two weeks and a half, because you really don't know how much fat you, you have in your diet on, until you really track it. And when I started tracking it, it took me like two weeks and a half to really get the hang of it, you know, how much I can eat of stuff. And then, you know, I got tired of tracking my food. So I just stopped eating all the fattening stuff like avocados. Yeah. I just stopped, I just took them out because I got tired of tracking. But yeah. tracking really keeps you on track. On track yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, you get to the point too that you you get a, you kind of know. Yeah, you know exactly. You don't need to track continue yeah. tracking because you know what's in what's the, the fat content. And then yeah. at the end of the day, when you have so many um uh, so much fat. So yeah, fat. Tra fat tracking is very easy. You just got to download very apps important. and measure your food intake, uh, mm -hmm. even if it's just for a few days, so you can get an idea. The percentage-wise, mathematically, uh, studies are very consistent that 15% or 30 grams of fat per day, 15% or less uh, or 30 grams of fat per day is how you want to uh, reverse insulin resistance, 15% of your total calories, mm -hmm. right? So if you're, you know, you're measuring that, that's your goal, 15% of total calorie intake. Um, so I'm going to ask, pay me ask if my husband wants to brown something, how about just cooking spray? I mean, just enough to coat the bottom. Well, let, I think right with, right with that question right there, we got to show you why it's not necessary. You know, you can, yeah. you can still get the browning effect. And that's what we're about to show. You still can get the browning effect that you're looking for in roasting, stir frying um, your food, of course. And cooking sprays is, is not the best thing to use because you can't measure that it comes out and yeah. you don't know how much you, how much you're getting out of that can. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah. For those of you guys, also, if you don't like to do much of the brain work, just know that Diabetes 180 has already done it for you. So we, as you see on the screen here, there's a QR code for a meal plan which while we're doing our meal prep, uh, you know, I'll show you how it looks, but it has all the recipes that are usually within 15%, some, some a little more, but mostly 15% or less fat, all the meals. And there's 290 plus recipes on there. And it gives you access to an already made meal plan for 30 days. Um, I'll show you in a moment how that looks, all right? But let's go ahead and show you guys uh, what we'll be stirring up. All right, so we got our, our Brussels sprouts, carrots, and sweet potato. I feel like, yeah, we're missing potatoes too. Oh, you we get it? Yeah, okay. okay. So potatoes. Um, what you're also going to want is, um, let's see, what's most, what should I go in order? I have a lot of stuff on the table. I'm just going to bring it in front of the camera. Uh, parchment paper, right? So that's to make sure it doesn't stick um, in, on top of your baking sheet. Okay. Um, Ideally, you probably want to have, a, if you can, get a flat baking sheet. That means it, that's so that the heat can, can really be directed evenly. Um, but we have one that's raised. It still works. <laughs> so a, fl a flat flat baking sheet is preferable. Um, a parchment paper that you're going to lay your vegetables on. Um, 
So how do we cut the vegetables? It really depends. So if you're using like your more dense vegetables, like, you know, potatoes, carrots are very dense and hard. You probably want to cut it in about two inch cubes about, you know, you don't want it too thick. All right. So you want to cut it small. So we'll probably cut them to about within about two inch cubes. Um, the carrots will probably cut it long though. Right. So in a moment, Carmen is going to start cutting and, um, and then I'll show you the app watch is cutting. Anyone who's following along, you know, you can follow along. And then um, from there, there's um, another the seasoning. The seasoning yeah. So what we're gonna also going to be doing, we're going to be using a honey mustard seasoning uh, mixture sauce. With it. Now, when you're ro roasting without oil, one thing that's important that we've noticed is moisture. Mm. Okay. Yeah. Without moisture, the, the they dry out, they can burn, you know, in the oven. You're like, man, that was a waste, right? And yeah. We learned that a hard way. <laughs> um, so moisture is important. So if you're using a sauce, it's a good idea to like, you know, soy sauce or vegetable broth. Uh, moisture is the key. That's all you need. And it will roast. It will brown in the oven. Surprise, surprise. It will brown without oil. Um, if you're not using uh, a sauce or mixture with your with your vegetables. You could also steam the vegetables, especially starchy vegetables. You could steam them. Um, and we have an example at the end of our cooking demonstration of how it's going to look either way if you're steaming them. Um, we still want to flavor it, so you might still want to put some herbs, some soy sauce on the uh, mixture, but moisture is what's going to keep it from drying up and being too you know dry in, uh, in the oven. And we're going to accomplish that right now with our sauce. So for our sauce, and if anyone wants to follow on making the sauce or mixture, uh, balsamic vinegar and and um, honey mustard. Dijon, Dijon, honey, Dijon. Not honey mustard. No, mustard, not honey mustard. Yeah, it's going to become honey mustard. <laughs> so um, am I, I'm always wondering if I'm saying it right. Is it Dijon? I don't know. Dijon mustard <laughs> and, uh, and balsamic vinegar. All right. Um, uh, so well, that's going to be uh, basically what we're going to be using vinegar. sauce. Balsamic vinegar. Okay. Yeah. And then uh, honey, a little bit of honey. Right. Now you might be asking about diabetes. You know, you're not supposed to be eating honey. What's 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 what this guy is telling us? Eat honey. when are diabetic. So number one, if you're eating again a low fat diet, if you're keeping your body in a low fat environment. You'll be surprised. Number one, that's the first thing you got to do. That's the first homework I'm going to give you. Start to decrease your fat percentage, right? So 15% or less. That's the first assignment, right? Once you've accomplished that, then you can start to increase your consumption of even root vegetables like these without spiking your blood sugar. We're going to do a video eventually where my wife goes through a whole day of eating high carb, high glycemic whole foods. Okay, that's the key whole foods. And you'll see her sugars are perfect. And this can happen with, with all you guys who are diabetic if you do the homework assignment number one of lowering your fat percentage so that glucose could jump over the wall and get into, inside the cell. Think of fat as a wall, like a quarterback that's keeping the sugars blocked in, your, in, in, in the blood. Once you start to remove the quarterback, the blood sugars, the, sorry, the sugars can exit the blood and go inside the cell. And uh, things, simple things like even honey, in moderation, in a mixture like 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 we're gonna make, not a concern. Okay. Um, obviously, don't be drizzling it all over your pancakes and stuff. No, that. that but if you, it, in a, as a simple sauce ingredient, it, it wouldn't be a problem, especially in a low fat environment. I like to talk a lot. We gotta get to action. We gotta get to work. All right. So, um, Karma, you can start cutting. Each of these. Oh yeah, yeah. The spices and herbs that we're using, they're in Portuguese. Um, this is black pepper, just a little bit we use in there. Oregano. Um, the recipe actually that we're following calls for uh, sage, but we didn't have, so we use an oregano. And then uh, this is um, rosemary, right? So those are the herbs we're using to bring some aromatic flavor. Um, and then, am I missing anything else? No. It's really simple. Is that it? You got your 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 salt. So I think we even we didn't add salt for this one to taste. So we're doing more of a sweet. Than, than a, a recipe here. So uh, while Carmi's cutting, I want to go ahead and show you guys the um, meal garden app. So it's a way you can start you know, with a no-brainer plan of, of low-fat meals.
right? Okay. Okay. So yeah, let me know if you need anything. So I'm gonna grab this tablet here. Can we get a little too formal? Um. Again, this is the first time I've, I've done a live with this tablet. So let's see. Hopefully, it works out fine. So first thing I have to figure out is how to share my screen. Let's see. All right, and uh, yeah, and as we're, we're as we're going forward, I, I'm really I'm still curious. Is anybody cooking along with us? I know there were some people who are. You don't have to, obviously. I know there were some people who said they were. Um, if you have decided not to, that's fine. So um, if I can't switch the camera around, I might have to Let's see. Yeah, so uh, what I'm trying to do here is try to see if I can show you what the uh, the app looks like. And if I can't do that, let's see, I might have to. Oh, here it is. All right, good, good. Here it is. Presentations. Let's see if we can do it like this. I think I might have figured it out. So bear with me. That's the problem of doing things new and different. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I'm not sure if it's going to work. I really want to show you guys. But anyway, what you can do is basically if you use a QR code and I'll show you, I'll show you guys on my phone how uh, the app looks. I think that will work fine. So let me know if you can see this. It might be a little hard to see. Are you guys seeing that? Right. Let me know if you guys are seeing that. Just say, hey, uh, yes, I see it. <laughs> you can see it good because my screen is actually quite small. Let me actually make it big. All right. So you guys can see it. OK, yeah. So on the top, you'll see uh, a list of basically how to get to know what the program is. Uh, definitely join the Facebook group if you haven't already. So right there is a link to our Facebook group. Um, and other things about our program. As you scroll up in the Meal Garden app, you'll see um, a, a whole week of, uh, of recipes. So these are four weeks of recipes. You just click on the uh, week you want to start at, and you got a whole week of recipes, all low-fat, whole food, plant-based recipes. All right. So scrolling up some more here, you have the um, 290 plus recipes we have as a collection. So let's say you don't really, you're not really into meal planning. Um, you just want to find a recipe here or there. Then you could just click on this and you have access to over 200, almost 300 recipes that are low fat, whole food, plant based, great for diabetes uh, because the, the carbs that are in, even though it's high carb, they're whole complex carbs in a low fat environment, which again makes it so that your sugars are better than they ever were on, on a low carb, high fat diet. All right, so um, these are just several articles you can look through uh, to get information on like how to cook without oil. So uh, you want to, what you really want to look at is this tutorial. This tutorial will show you how to uh, use this meal garden app. There's a whole lot of things you can do on this app. I mean, it's awesome. Um, so I would say, don't before you dive in, jump to the tutorial button. And it's a video that show, walks you through everything you can do with Meal Garden app. Okay, so if you haven't already, go ahead and scan the QR code on the bottom. Uh, and again, this is free. There's no charge at all. This is not something I'm selling. This is something to help uh, the many people that we know suffering with diabetes uh, and other chronic diseases, uh, because the low-fat, whole food, plant-based diet life, lifestyle is not just for diabetics. It's for everybody who wants to prevent chronic disease. So uh, it's free, no, no strings attached, just uh, scan the QR code and enjoy. And uh, if you need support or questions, of course, let us know. And um, so from there, as Carmi is cutting, I would also like to show you guys something here. This is a... Uh, I don't know if you guys know about calorie density, right? So calorie density, 
is the idea of you know basically how 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 much calories are in a certain food item or food product for the volume that it fills your stomach, right? Um, yes, it is on the Facebook page, okay? So if you, if you want to jo join uh, the Meal Garden app, join through it and you're in the Facebook group, then uh, just look at the featured section. I think at the top, you'll be able to see. But yeah, this is a picture, a real good visual representation of, of calorie density. So I don't know if you guys can see this. So if you see here on uh, my, depending on how I'm holding the camera, on the far right, I guess, you'll see oil. I don't know if you guys can see that relative to how much it fills your stomach. <laughs> and it might be hard to see, but this is 500 calories of oil on the far uh, right versus 500 calories of plant-based foods like potatoes, beans, uh, whole grains even on the far left. You can see 500 calories get add up very fast when you have oil in your diet. Um, meat and uh, cheese are in the middle there. These foods are high in calories, but not as, but so I guess not filling. So what, you're, what that means is before you're full, with eating uh, animal-based products, meat, dairy, eggs, cheese, and oil, you're going to be your calories are going to add up very fast, and that's why it's so hard to lose weight. So hard to start seeing the scale drop go in the right direction when you're eating these foods. Once you start getting rid of the foods that are calorie dense, meaning they're high in calories but they don't fill you up the way plant-based foods do, um, yeah, you'll you'll see a big difference. So. Um, this is uh, something you can Google, just calorie density, forks over nice article, just get you an idea of why we promote a whole food plant-based diet that's low in fat, okay? Because oil is so rich in calories. Um, again, like we said earlier, just one tablespoon, 120 calories, right? So we're going to learn how to eliminate that. And say again? You cook with a lot more than one yeah, usually it's a lot more than that, um, right? I don't know how many, how much oil you guys use in oil, how much oil you use. Um, <laughs> you don't really measure it, you just store it. Now, I don't know how many of you guys are vegan. I don't know, there might be a lot of people who are already vegetarian. Um, and I know one thing I, I get from vegetarians, uh, vegans, is they say, um, I'm eating healthy, I don't know why, my blood sugar is out of control. I've been I've been on this vegan diet for so many years. Uh, my blood sugars are getting worse. This usually is a is a is a the ingredient that's messing you up is oil, um, if not other fat fat sources of plant because there's also high sources of plant uh, fat. Uh, avocados, for example, are very fatty. So if you're a vegetarian or vegan, um, then I'm actually curious: is anybody vegan or vegetarian in the group already? Or am I talking to uh, some carnivores up in this building? That's okay if you are. That's all right. That's all right. And um, <laughs> no judgment at all. But just curious if anyone is already on this path of uh, plant-based. Uh, yeah, we got some yeses coming up. Good. That's awesome. If you're not, that's fine. Um, again, you got the meal plan. If you want to start trying to eat more vegetarian or vegan, um, and you don't have what's what's nice about this recipe, and I'll stay tuned to the end. You're gonna see how it turns out. So we're not just cooking, throwing it in the oven and saying goodbye. We're going to see how it turns out. Um, you can still enjoy good tasting food. You don't have to sacrifice health for, health for taste. That's what I love about this whole lifestyle. You know, um, you don't, you could still enjoy good tasting food, right? Um, so if you guys want to see what, how Tom is going, get, get through so far. Uh, so she got in the bowl. All right, so um, once she's done chopping up, I'm gonna show you guys the uh, the dressing mixture, but I thought it'd be cool to do this really quick and show you um, what's in our cabinet. So our pantry, sorry, let me say it right. Um, so if you're new to being a more whole food uh, based, Marlon Wallace, all right, <laughs> nice, thanks for joining us. Um, Yes, I see Juliet, vegetarian, trying to be vegan. You can do it. Absolutely. All right. I believe in you. Uh, so this is our pantry. Um, you're going to eat a lot of beans. 
<laughs> uh, my wife likes to cook them whole. So you know, these are all dried beans uh, that she has here. All right. The, 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 and there's so many varieties of people say, I don't like beans. So I don't, you know, you just haven't tried the right one. Try different, try, you know, there's so many different class. Uh, and you guys like beans? What are your favorite beans? You know, let me know in the chat. What are your favorite beans? Um, but yeah, we eat beans. Beans, I'd say, is like the base of, <laughs> of most of the recipes. Uh, it's a superfood. Did you know that? You know, uh, there's so many health benefits of beans. So, um, but yeah, I'm curious if I'm the only one here that likes beans. Garbanzo, pinto, let's go. I love it all. You know, it's funny, as a um, when I was young, so if, it, if for those who don't know me, I'm Haitian, uh, Haitian American, and we eat a lot of beans, a lot of rice and beans. <laughs> and as a kid, I couldn't, st I couldn't stand it. You know, beans. I was like sick of it. You know, so I'd be spitting it out, hiding it. You know, in, in my cheek to go through. You know, spit it in the bathroom. You know, I did some. Um, uh, yeah, it's it's crazy because now I'm thinking back, like man, all those beans I wasted. You know. <laughs> You realize how good it is, you know. And my, and my mom, I mean, obviously, I'm a little uh, prejudiced, but my mom made the, makes the best rice and beans. We got black garbanzo beans, black eyed peas. Yes, I love it, man. Whether it be in a soup or sauce or salad or with, along with grain, rice, it's so versatile. Split peas. Yes, yeah, so there we got, we got a lot of beans, right? Then we got our um, spices. So a uh, good collection of spices. Um, I would read them off to you, but they're a lot and they're in Portuguese, so and I can't read them. Right. So I have to get my wife to translate. But um, you know, you're gonna have a lot of spices because it herbs and spices, and if you don't have a, a, a pantry full of herb and spices, you're really missing out because herbs and spices are basically nature's medicine. Um supplements, vitamins, minerals, you know, antioxidant rich. Um, they're they're all very potent when it comes to preventing and also reversing chronic illnesses. Um, anyone know what the um, herb with the highest anti-inflammatory effect is? And I'm curious if everyone knows, the most anti-inflammatory um, spice, I should say, uh, there is. Uh, there's, there are many of the spices and herbs are anti-inflammatory, but there's one that's really high in its uh, potency to be anti-inflammatory. I'm curious if anybody knows what that is. All right. so. Um, Closes, but there's one that's more. There's one that's more. Uh, so we got going down here. Uh, let's see. You got you know uh, some more of our spices. We keep things pretty simple. This is actually, um, you know, we try as much as possible not to eat things that are bagged or packaged. But um, I like to throw um, these in like in my um, so oatmeal. They're basically dried fruit. I'm trying to find, find one that I like. You know, so this is like you know dried fruit. I like to throw these in my oatmeal makes really good uh, uh, like overnight oats. If you want something safe, sweet. Um, yeah, cayenne, we got ginger. Someone got, someone said turmeric and that, if you said turmeric, it's that right there is actually, according to studies, the most anti-inflammatory spice. Um, so there are, not to say the others aren't good at the, uh, at that, but turmeric is one of the biggest things. So um, if you don't have turmeric, start, start, start stop, stocking it. Um, going down, we got our jars here. So we, I don't know if you guys are seeing that, but popcorn, definitely a good treat. Uh, we got brown rice. Is that brown rice, Carmen? Basmati, brown rice, uh, yeast flakes. Got to get our B12. I'm not showing it right here. Uh, walnuts. Typically, we use steel cut oatmeal, uh, but we haven't been able to find he any here. Uh, raisins. I've got my love. My wife loves these uh, pistachios, right? So um, anyway, that's enough of our pantry. So I think my wife probably has the veggies uh, all chopped up. What we're gonna do now? Then let me show you the finished product here. Is that seeing showing up? Good. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, and actually that's a that's a lot more than I thought. Oh, take both them? Yeah, because we're actually making it, we're not gonna make a lot uh, tonight, so take some of that out. I don't wanna make too much sauce, um, so. Oh, that's good. Yeah, you can take that out. So what we're now gonna do is work on the sauce, all right? And so this, so this is really nice. This is a really nice recipe. Actually, if you wanna know where it came from, I gotta give credit to Mastering Diabetes. Master diabetes practice the same things we teach, low fat, whole food, 
plant-based diet to reverse diabetes. And uh, they, they, I got this uh, sauce mixture idea from their, their website. I think it could work with anything, but it tends to work really well as a, as a sauce mixture for a um, little, actually, you know, I'm gonna actually use this whole bowl. So dump, dump that on the table. Oh, you're using a bowl? Yeah, yeah. for the sauce. Oh, mm -hmm. oh okay. Yeah. okay. Okay, then let's put in as much as they want. Yeah, so then we'll just fill it as needed, right? The okay. idea is you want enough vegetables. You want the sauce to, to coat the vegetables, right? If we have too much vegetables for sauce, I don't want to make too much sauce. I want to make a little bit. Um, it's fine. Where's the tablespoon? So the first thing we're going to do is uh, after we chopped our vegetables, I missed something, preheat your oven. So 400 degrees is uh, your oven is, pre is ideally being preheated right now and ready, okay? Um, so hopefully you guys can see. So uh, for the, as far as the um, balsamic, bal I can't say that right. Balsamic. Balsamic <laughs> vinegar, two tablespoons, right? And uh, to keep it simple, it's two tablespoons of balsamic vinegar, two tablespoons of honey, and two tablespoons of mustard. Two, two, two. Dijon. Dijon mustard. That's what we're using, right? And uh, let me get the uh, spoon up. Actually, can I get another spoon? Sure. Yeah, so I can scrape it off. Okay. Scrape it off and the mustard. But um, I should I could scoop the mustard off of the, the tablespoon. Wait, you can't use that? And that's for the slices. Oh, okay. All right, so this is a new can. So uh, two tablespoons of honey. That came out real fast. That's a little bit more than two tablespoons. So that's probably about good enough. All right. I one tablespoon. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it, it was pretty heaping though. Oh. So, um, again, if you're if you're viewing a little later, um, if you're coming in late, I should say, uh, we talked about honey. You know, we know that usually you know, you're told you can't eat honey um, if you're a diabetic. Now I would I would say that obviously if you're drizzling it on top of a sandwich or inside of tea, yeah, you might have experienced some problems. But if you're eating a low-fat diet, again, you're making sure that you're sensitive to more uh, to blood to insulin. You're becoming more tolerant to glucose, right? A little honey inside of a mixture like this isn't going to be a problem, right? So. Uh, the next thing we can keep that is the uh, mustard. We said two tablespoons of mustard. Okay. Trying to be exact, you know. Obviously, when you're when you're cooking for, when I mean, you're showing a demonstration like this, you want to try to be as close to, as possible to the recipe. But um, yeah, another tablespoon. good and then um once you got the wet ingredients in the bowl i don't know if you guys can see that there it looks like mm -hmm. yep uh, we're gonna go ahead and throw the salt the spices in this is really good man it tastes good and i can't wait to show you guys the finished product right um after we throw it in the oven we're gonna press the fast forward button and and, and uh it'll be done <laughs> yeah i'll take that mm -hmm. i'll need a teaspoon so as far as our spices go just a teaspoon, just a little dash of uh, each spice. So about a teaspoon of rosemary. About a teaspoon of uh, oregano. oregano. You know, oregano is great. Oregano is great uh, not just for anti-inflammatory effects, but also it's an antiviral and antibiotic as well. Oregano can knock out a cold. <laughs> Anytime we start getting the sniffles, we, we, we up our oregano and it's gone. All right, so I don't know if you guys like uh, oregano, but yeah, this is another a very, very potent herb that you always have in your kitchen, All right? Along with the ones you, you, you guys mentioned, ginger, cayenne, turmeric, cloves, great. About, uh, when it comes to black pepper, we don't use too much, just to give a little more, a little kick, maybe half a teaspoon, something like that. 
All right, so fun part, we just stir it up. I should say the fun part is when we coat the vegetables. Look. I don't know if you can see the stirring. All right, so um, obviously once this live is done, you can watch this back if you want to follow along. Uh, I think it's, I'm not sure if it, it, it broadcasts right away, but there'll be a, you could pl a playback option. You could watch it when it's done. Yeah. All right, so I think it's mixed up pretty good enough, pretty much. Let me right, bring so it. You want to bring the camera? Oh yeah, bring the camera a little closer. You can see the, the herbs swimming in there. Really good. So ready. So again, remember the key is to coat the vegetables well, okay? So that, you know, when it goes in the oven, it's, it's, it has some moisture. It doesn't matter if, you, if you're using soy sauce or vegetable broth, right? It doesn't really have to be this specific, there's no magic in this, right? It's just, we're adding moisture and flavor with this, uh, this recipe, okay? So I hope that makes sense. Now we're gonna put all the vegetables in. I wanna make sure I got my Brussels sprouts and some, this is the sweet potato and carrots, potatoes, let's see. Like potatoes, anyone like potatoes? Man, I love, I love me some potatoes, man. There's never a bad day for potatoes. Yeah. Uh, Baked, mashed, with some stir fry use. So that's another very versatile vegetable. I think that's probably a good amount. You don't want the bigger spoon? Yeah, maybe I'll take a bigger spoon. <laughs> <laughs> but then you want to basically uh, throw in as much as you want to coat all the vegetables in your bowl. Okay. And um, what I'm also going to show you is we've actually baked uh, roasted vegetables with just soy sauce right so if you want to just do with soy sauce and that get like a salty flavor this is going to be more sweet and i'll show you the, the after of that yeah yeah thanks that'd be good um what you what we can do now you want to, i'm right to show them the baby this could probably use some more veggies but for demonstration purposes, we'll just leave this much. All right, so now you're gonna have a nice, now I now what I would recommend doing once you got it all mixed up is probably keeping, let me, letting it sit for, I don't know, maybe a few minutes, five, six minutes, let, letting that moisture kind of in the flavoring uh, kind of settle into the vegetables. 10 minutes. About 10 minutes, you would say? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. to let it kind of soak in, all right? So we're gonna fast forward through time and pretend like we let it sit, right? So now what we're gonna do is put uh, parchment paper in a uh, baking sheet. So just enough to cover it. I think that's good. That's probably even too much. Oh my. It's hard doing sitting down. <laughs> Let me do it. Sorry. Yeah, you have to hold it. Yeah, I'm not yet to hold it. But it's hard doing sitting down. Yeah. All right, so. Yeah. Okay, so um, again, ideally, you probably want a flat baking sheet. This is uh, yeah. it's not flat, but it's going to work. You're going to see. You're going to see. Stay tuned. All right, so. Now, um, you know, let's say we set, we let it sit for about 10 minutes and go ahead and pour it right through onto the pan. Mm -hmm. Wanna, yeah, yeah, go ahead and hover. And uh, you should scrape don't it over waste, the spatula. Don't want to waste any of this delicious sauce. So grab my spatula, make sure it's all coated. And um, once we got all the sauce in the pan, um, I'm gonna spread the vegetables out so they could be in one layer. Okay. Again, you don't need to have this mixture. 
You can, if you have vegetable broth at home, you can do this. You got something like soy sauce, you can do this. Um, even if you just steam the vegetables a little bit, that's another thing too, Carmen, right? You could steam mm -hmm. the vegetables. Yeah. Let's say, you know, you don't have any, uh, you want to do it really quick to steam the vegetables, throw on, uh, add some, some sage, some rosemary, some oregano, some, um, some herbs, and then put it in the oven, right? So as long as you've had moisture somehow inside the vegetables, you'll keep it from drying out in the oven and you'll see the browning effect in a moment. So, oh yeah, let me go ahead and uh, spread them out. So I want to make them to be like in a nice, even layer. All right, that's good. This one's a little thick. I would, I mean, this is sweet potato? Yeah. That's good, that, that'll work, that's fine. All right, a, a couple other things too is, um, yeah, I guess if you could show that, we'll show them the oven. I guess in the, in the states, I well, you don't know where people are viewing. So yeah. uh, the oven we have, they only it only heats on the top, and not on the bottom. So what I had to do while it's in the oven is is uh, you could show it too. Show what I did is basically turn them, flip them a little bit, and stir them up so that it's it's heated evenly on both sides. If you have an uh, oven where it has heat coming from both bottom, top and bottom, you may not have to do that. It'll still be a good idea once we place it in the oven to check on it every you know five ten minutes or so. But the cooking time varies uh, based on what kind of vegetable you're using. So if you're using, um, I guess vegetables like this, it might take about like forty minutes or so. Or um, but it really depends. If you're using more softer vegetables or the medium to soft vegetables, it might cook in about twenty to thirty minutes. Right? It really varies. So just keep your eye on it. You know. Uh, so you don't burn the vegetables. If you start seeing it, what you're going to start seeing is a browning effect. When it starts to brown, it's ready. All right. If you want to make sure it's heated on both sides, stir it up, um, uh, turn it, turn the vegetables over a little bit, and make sure it's uh, browned on, on both sides. Right. So, and you'll see that in a moment. So, I guess should I just pretend like I put it in the oven? I guess. <laughs> All right, so I'm gonna pretend like I put it in an oven and I'm gonna fast forward through time and show you the finished product. That's what everyone wants to see, right? Oh, you want to know? Sorry. I wanna pretend like I'm putting it in an oven. Oh, okay. All right, so here it is, guys. So um, let me show you the two, the first one. Uh, let me see. Yeah, my uh, move the camera down. So this is the um, honey mustard one. Okay, so honey mustard honey. Uh, sorry. Yeah, honey mustard mixture. Yeah, <laughs> and it's it's more of a sweet taste. Uh, definitely it has a savory kick to it too. Um, but it's 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 yummy. You can see. I don't know if you can see the lighting. We have it. It is browned. Uh, um, it's roasted, right? It was looking. It was looking a lot better too when it just came out. Ah, uh, yeah, yes. It's just yeah. actually been sitting <laughs> for a few hours. <laughs> um, it's cold right now. This didn't literally come out the oven. Sorry, you know, I'm, I'm not a magician like that. But if you want to bring it as close as possible, I know we're supposed to have. We should have a good camera. Go ahead and screenshot that and share it in our Facebook group, somebody. <laughs> oh, someone said no nutritional yeast. That would have been a great idea. Yeah. And uh, we have in our uh, in our pantry, right? So, um, yeah, good nutritional yeast would be great with this, man. That's what I'm saying. Do your own thing, you know? But, um, yeah, that's, that's, that's it. It is. It, oh, it's young. I had, mm -hmm. I, I've had, I've had a, a plate already. <laughs> I might have to save this. One. It's just kind of late over here. So, all right. So let me show you guys another option. So we use dark soy sauce. So it looks dark. Um, this is more of a salty option. So this is roasted. What we did with these vegetables, we 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 steamed them um, first, right? And then um, actually, what I, what did I yeah, I steamed them first, and I applied. Then I put some some soy sauce on there. And um, yep, same thing. Brown waited till they browned. Uh, I had to turn them over in the oven because our oven heats on top only. So I turned them a little bit in the oven so they could brown on both sides. When it's browned and soft, yes, it's ready to eat. So there you go. No oil. It can be done, <laughs> um, and it can be delicious. And you can even see, you can you can feel the difference, right? When you're eating food without oil, right? Yeah. You can literally feel the difference. Yeah. Um, 
But you know, I must say that yeah. you can't expect it to be like um, roasting with oil. It mm. definitely don't have the same texture, mm. of course, because the oil makes it like more crispy and stuff. Yeah. In my opinion. Yeah. But it, I think it depends on how long you roasted it too. Yeah. Because like um, some of them were to me were crunchy. You know, oh. uh, depending on. But if you if you want to roast it a little longer, you get crunchier. Um, and the ones we left in the oven that got burned, they yeah, were very crunchy. Yeah, we, we, we burned them before, so uh, and it, it was crazy. It even when it's burnt, tastes good. Oh yeah, <laughs> burnt on the, uh, But uh, that's the that's the finished uh, product there. You know, you got your um, honey mustard, uh, roasted vegetables. You got your soy sauce, salty flavor um, vegetables, and you're ready to eat your no oil whole food plant-based meal. Um, so you guys, if you're not already in the group, it's called Diabetes 180. Diabetes 180, if you want to join the group, all right? Um, yes, Sarah, thank you. For, I really appreciate that, Perry. Yeah. Uh, and um, invite other people to the group. If you're already a member in the group with Diabetes 180, um, if you're not, then search Facebook for Diabetes 180. It's that simple. I think I'm the only one with that name. Uh, Diabetes 180 Facebook group. Okay, um, and then of course, if you haven't already taken the uh, um, advantage of our QR code, um, it might be a little hard because if you're watching on your phone, grab your grab someone else's phone and, and, and use a QR code and start enjoying the the meal the meal plan. Um, we're here to support you guys, right? Um, this program was created to help people like my wife to come off medications using nature as food, using what God intended for us to to heal from. Mm -hmm the food that we eat day to day. It is possible. We've been doing it with our clients, uh, patients that I, I, I have as a, physician, as a physician assistant. I've experienced the same changes of diabetes reversal and coming off many medications with this low fat, whole food plant-based approach. I'd be wrong to not plug in an opportunity uh, for you to receive free coaching. I'm sorry, free coaching consult. The coaching is not free. I would love for it to be free. <laughs> But the consultation is free if you want to find out about our three-step method to diabetes reversal. Um, definitely want to join the group, and, and we'll, we'll let you know how, okay? Uh, so that's it. That's all we got for you. We, uh, is it too late to eat this? No, I'm hungry. Uh, we're about to eat, y'all. <laughs> all right. <laughs> so thank you again. Uh, hope you enjoyed it. And um, if you weren't following along, make it yourself and let us know in the group how, you, how it came out. Share your pictures. All right. See you guys in two weeks. That's how often we have lives. See you in the next one. Bye.